it's very importantly only five minutes from the airport. The airport's right next door. With Doral, we have a series of magnificent buildings. We call them bungalows. They each hold from 50 to 70 very luxurious rooms with magnificent views. And we have many hundreds of acres so that in terms of parking, in terms of all of the things that you need, each country can have their own villa or their own bungalow. Welcome back to Hardball. That was President Trump back in August making a sales pitch for his Trump National Doral Miami golf course in Florida. The president made it clear he hoped to host next year's Group of Seven G7 meeting of world leaders at his personal property. And yesterday, acting chief of staff Mick Mulvaney made it official. Mulvaney said a dozen locations were vetted, including one in Hawaii and two in Utah. But he declined to provide details on how and why Doral was ultimately picked. It came apparent at the end of that process um, that Doral was by far and away, far and away, the best physical facility uh, for this meeting. It's almost like they built this facility to host this type of event. I don't talk about how this place runs on the inside. So if you ask us, if you want to see our paper on how we did this, the answer is absolutely not. Mulvaney argued that the summit would be put on, on uh, at cost, excuse me, and said the president would not profit from the event. The Washington Post reports, quote, that decision is without precedent in modern American history. The president used his public office to direct a huge contract to himself. It adds the resort, quote, has been in sharp decline in recent years, according to the Trump organization's own records. Its net operating income fell 69 percent from 2015 to 2017. Two House committees, Oversight and Judiciary, have already demanded information about efforts to steer government business to the president's resorts. The choice of Doral brought widespread condemnation from Democrats and some Republicans. Here's Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger of Illinois. I'm not happy with it. Now, when you look, I actually read the emoluments clause again yesterday, and it talks about, you know, titles and nobility and all this kind of stuff. I don't know if it's a direct violation, but it's, I don't understand why at this moment they had to do that. I mean, do it in D.C., do it in Miami at a different resort. For more, I'm joined by Walter Schaub, former director of the U.S. Office of Government Ethics and currently senior advisor at Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington, CREW, and Anita Kumar, White House correspondent and associate editor at Politico. Thanks to both of you for being with us, Walter. Let me start with you. Uh, Mulvaney says the president won't profit from this, therefore not a conflict. Assess that claim. Well, that's a ridiculous thing for Mulvaney to say. Essentially, it boils down to this. The president of the United States participated in a contract award to his own business. This is the figurative equivalent of he reaches in to the Treasury, grabs a chunk of money and says, don't worry, I'm not taking more than I'm spending. That's no defense at all. And certainly, if he had been, if it had been Mick Mulvaney who owned this property, he'd be prosecuted and convicted of a felony, and he wouldn't be able to say, oh, don't worry, I broke even. So, Anita, that comment there we just played from Adam Kinzinger, Republican from Illinois, he said he's not happy about this, but then he said, he said, why? Why not, just given all the questions this raises, given all the grief it causes the White House, why not just have it somewhere else? What, what is that the answer is, to that? That is a great question, and the one I was wondering yesterday, because, as you know, as you mentioned, the House is investigating this. This is part of the impeachment inquiry right now. Why would he do this? No politician would do this because of the optics alone. And so I was talking to people, uh, people that are close to the president, who say at this point in his presidency, he's done so many outrageous things, things that aren't the norm, that, and he knows he can get away with it. His supporters still support him. It's about the same as, as it's been for the last two and a half years. And he feels fearless was the word that was used with me. And he also feels bulletproof. Why not go ahead and do it? He can get away with it. Also, Anita, we mentioned there, they say, Mulvaney says yesterday, 12 different sites were considered. I think Hawaii, Utah. Uh, what else do we know? Do we know anything else about this? He's saying there was a selection process here. Do we know anything about that? Is there, are there any rac records to support it? 
they haven't been, I'm sure there are some records, but we don't have access to them. They're not being transparent about it at all. And you heard that comment from Mick Mulvaney saying, if you want the paperwork, we're not going to give it to you. It's been, uh, you know, shrouded in secrecy. Basically, they, they claim that there were 12, that they did certain site selections, and that everyone came back and said this was the place to go. But we just have no idea if that's the case and, and what they really looked at. I mean, if you look at this property there, I'm sure there are some benefits, but there's also some negatives. And one of the things that I've heard is that they will probably have to do some changes, some upgrades um, to accommodate all these world leaders, that they're, they're not enough of these uh, spaces that are exactly the same. So are, are they going to put in money to upgrade the facility? We just don't know that. Well, just a few days before his inauguration back in January 2017, then-President-elect Trump said he would sever management ties from the Trump organization and play no role in its operations, saying he'd give complete and total control of the business to his sons. And what I'm going to be doing is my two sons, who are right here, Don and Eric, are going to be running the company. They are going to be running it in a very professional manner. They're not going to discuss it with me. Again, I don't have to do this. They're not going to discuss it with me. Uh, Walter, he says they're not going to discuss it with him at the same time. We, we, this whole segment is about the president using his platform to promote his, uh, uh, to promote his club and now to bring the G7 summit there. You know, on the day he gave that press conference and said those words, I spoke out and said that this is meaningless because the conflict of interest doesn't stem from running the day-to-day -day operations. It stems from his financial interest. And now we're seeing he's determined to prove me right because he is the one who's going to profit from this. He owns the business. He participated in the procurement. I mean, the bottom line here is there is no definition of corruption that would not cover the president participating in a contract award to himself. So if this is not corrupt, nothing is corrupt. And that's exactly what he wants. And it seems to be exactly what the United States Senate is determined to have be the case. Uh, Anita, what do we know about actually we, we could show you this, too. They asked if it was appropriate for the president to hold the G7 in his own resort. A couple different reactions from Republican senators. Take a look. I don't have any concerns about it other than just politically how it appears. But yeah. on the other hand, you know, like, this is the president, if he feels like he isn't doing anything wrong, he just doubles down on it and talks louder. And I, I to some degree, I, I, I don't mind that. I admire it. It's, it may seem careless politically, but um, on the other hand, it's, as I always say, there's, there's tremendous integrity in his boldness, boldness and his uh, transparency. Show me where there's a violation of law. I'm not sure that there is. Not that I'm aware of. So a little mix of comments there, Anita. But I'm curious, though, in this moment, the president is asking Republicans in Congress to defend him on Ukraine, to defend him on the call, to defend him on quid pro quo, to defend him on Syria. A lot of them haven't been willing to do that. And now to defend him on this. Well, is that causing any kind of a is that causing resentment among Republicans in Congress? Is, is that going to have any consequences? I've actually been surprised at how few people have few Republicans have called him out. You mentioned a couple, but for all of those, there were several who said what uh, was said at the end, which is they admire him and it's fine and they don't think there's anything wrong with that. Remember, he's been doing this not on this scale, but he's been doing this exact same thing for the last two and a half years. Uh, foreign leaders have been to Mar-a-Lago. He's met with seven of them there. Uh, the prime minister of Japan uh, stayed at Mar-a-Lago. So there have been other things that are exactly the same where he is getting money from foreign governments and he's also getting money from the taxpayers through federal agencies, Secret Service, staying there when he's there. It's been the same issue for the last two and a half years. This is on a grander scale, but, but we didn't hear much about it in the last two and a half years from Republicans. So there's no reason to think that they would be any different. All right, Anita Kumar, Walter Schaub, thank you both for joining us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.